as we all trust the Lord to come in a mighty way, in a special way. It starts off with the declaration. It's about God moving. So if we must see revival and the revival that will continue, we better cling. 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 So that new life can be new life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I greet us again, viewers, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, my name is Timothy Gidinji. I'm born again. I love the Lord. I'm coming to us from Chris Cole, New Life. And uh, we thank God for this hour so that you can share the word of God. Thank you for joining us. We shall pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless you because of giving us yet another opportunity to hear from you, to hear your word, Lord. We are praying the Lord Jesus, you shall minister to us, you shall minister to our viewers, O oh God, that Lord, as your word continues to come to us, Father, our lives will never be the same again. You shall equip us, God Almighty, you shall help us, Lord, to grow in faith, to grow, O oh God Almighty, in walking with you, in hearing your voice, Father, in this hour, my God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We resist the devil in his kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ. We resist destructions of the word of God. We pray, Father, I pray also for utterances from your throne in the mighty name of Jesus, that it may become a blessing to my viewers, O God, for the honor and the glory of your name. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We bless the, uh, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We continue with our teaching today. And I have been teaching about keys to kingdom living. There are keys that are able to help us in our work with the Lord. Uh, keys that we engage in that are mostly found in the word of God. Keys that are found in what God has said concerning us. Keys that can help us. And uh, in our last program, we were, we, were, we were checking the key of claiming God's promises upon our lives. There are those things God has spoken for you. Uh, as a believer, that you can connect with through the word of God, and those things are going to help you in your walk with the Lord. You not live a life uh, that has no victory. You not live a life of uh, of confusion. You not live a life that you you are you are, you, you you are not trusting God. You are not uh, holding on to God so strongly. The Lord is able to help you to connect with what he has said in his word. And you have to know who you are. And these promises, we claim them by faith. It is by faith we ask the Lord. We claim what he has said. He has spoken it. I can claim it. It can become mine. Hallelujah. As a child of God. Praise be to Jesus. And we spoke about several promises God has given us. Uh, and today we will continue on the same vein. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 26, God has promised to give us wisdom. Hallelujah. Uh, the Bible says also in James 1, verse 5, that uh, if you don't have wisdom, wisdom on what to do, wisdom on where to go, wisdom on how to operate in a certain area of your life, ask God for wisdom. And when you're asking God for wisdom, ask by faith. Tell God to fill you with wisdom. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, one of the characteristics of Messiah, of Jesus, is that he is called, uh, this, of, the, of the spirit of the Lord Jesus, is the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom also, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it is also a gift of the spirit. We need the gift of the spirit to help us in, the, in our walk with the God, and especially for those who are ministering, in the work of the ministry, you need the word of wisdom. You need wisdom. You need the gift of wisdom in your life. And so if you don't have wisdom, you can ask God for wisdom. You can tell him, I need wisdom. The Bible says God gave to Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and, and largeness of heart. Largeness of heart speaks. That is in First Kings chapter 4 and verses 29. The Bible says that God gave to Solomon much wisdom. 
exceeding much wisdom and largeness of heart. What does largeness of heart mean? It means discernment. Hallelujah. You need discernment in your life. You need to know how to design things in the spirit. You need to design spirits. You need to design spirit of deception that are that are moving out in the world there you need to design you need to know you have to have wisdom in god and the bible says christ himself is the wisdom of god he is our wisdom i want to understand from that scripture that the more i receive jesus in me the more wisdom of the father comes upon my heart hallelujah to the name of the lord the more wisdom comes upon you the more you are receiving the lord jesus christ because the lord jesus himself is wisdom so, wisdom is very important. That's why James says, if you don't have wisdom, please ask to God who gives liberally to those who ask him. Hallelujah. Asking, knocking, and you know, asking, knocking, and uh, uh, asking, knocking, and, uh, and seeking. I spoke about that in our previous program in our uh, Chris Con New Life official in YouTube. You can check my previous programs there. I spoke about asking, about seeking, and about knocking. Praise be to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So in Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 26, this is what the Bible says. For God has given to a man that is, that is good in his sight wisdom, no, and knowledge, and joy. But to the sinner he giveth to avail. He gather, and to, he gather to gather and to heap up that he may give to him that is good before God. Hallelujah. Do you hear the wicked gathers for the righteous? From that Bible, from that verse in the Bible. Hallelujah. You should not be worried very much about the wicked people and what they are doing in the world and many things they are doing out there. The Bible tells me here, the wicked who have re refused to obey the Lord Jesus Christ, those ones, they are gathering for the righteous. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. But that is not my point right now. I'm speaking about wisdom. I'm speaking about claiming the promises of God. That God can give his promises. Hallelujah. To the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is able to give wisdom. He is able to give wisdom in his sight. In the sight of God there is wisdom. And there is knowledge. And there is joy. That is the promise that you can claim to God. You can also claim the promise of uh, when you are afflicted. There, is, there are promises in the Bible for the afflicted. Are you afflicted today? Psalm chapter that 4 verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. They can be many. They can be many because you are against the world. You are against the devil. The afflictions can be many. But what the Lord says here, the Lord has promised, but the Lord delivered it delivereth him out of them all. The Lord delivers him out of them all. He has promised that though your affliction is a righteous person, there are many. The Lord has promised not even one is going to remain. He is going to deliver you from them all. Hallelujah. There are promises to believers. Are you a believer today in the Lord Jesus Christ? This is your promise. Psalms chapter 7 verses 3. The Bible says, trust in the Lord and do good, that and so shalt thou dwell in the land, and, and, and verily thou shalt be fed. Hallelujah. I like such a scripture in the Bible. Trust in the Lord and also do good. What, the, what has the Lord promised? You shall dwell in the land. That is, a, that is a promise to the believer. Are you trusting in God today? Are you waiting upon him? He has promised to keep you in the land. You not die before your time. Praise be to Jesus. Hallelujah. He has promised that you shall also be fed. He shall feed you. He shall feed you like a shepherd. Jesus is your shepherd. He's going to feed you. He's going to help you. He's going to give you the right spiritual food to help you to grow in God, to help you to know him. He's going to give you revelation. He's going to give you a spirit to an overflowing measure if you ask him by faith. Hallelujah. In the book of uh, St. Mark chapter 9 verse 23, NIV version, if you can, if you can, it's a, quest, it's a question, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Are you believing today? Are you believing God for healing? Are you believing God for the miraculous? Are you believing God for open doors? Are you believing God for favor? Are you believing God for breakthrough in prayer? Are you believing God? Jesus said, Jesus said, if you can believe, if only you can believe, believe if only you can believe 
everything will be possible. Not some things, but with God, all things are possible. Not some, but all things are possible to those that believe it. Hallelujah. God has promises for children. In Psalm chapter 27, verse 10, the Bible says, When my father, not if, when my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Hallelujah. The Lord has promised this blessing to children. Are you a child there? Are you a young person there? Are you a parent, but you have your parent who has forsaken you? This is the word of the Lord to you right now. This is the promise of the Father. He has said, when my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. You can lean upon that promise of the Father. The Lord has, has promises for the contrite in heart. Uh, Isaiah chapter 57 verse 15. For thus says the high and the loft one that inhabited, that inhabited eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. Come on now. In the book of Ephesians, the Bible says that you are seated with the, with the Lord Jesus in the heavenly places. Do you know you can be able to rule with the Lord Jesus in this world? Do you know you are seated with with him. Do you know you are seated with the Lord Jesus Christ? You can speak a matter and it can be so. Your tongue carries an authority. That's why, that's why you're not supposed to speak negative things about yourself because your tongues carry some authority and you can only be, go beyond what you have declared with your words. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the, to the name of the Lord. To revive the spirit of the humble. And to revive the heart of the conscience ones. The Lord has promised to revive the heart of the conscience ones. We are in the hour of revival. God has promised to give us revival in this country called Kenya. God has promised to bless us with the revival. And those who are contrite in their hearts, if your heart is right with God, if your heart is right with the people, if your heart is right with your leadership, if you are properly submitted to your elders, hallelujah, if you are properly submitted to the to your pastor, the Lord says to you, if you are contrite in heart, your heart having a relationship right with the people and with the God. The Lord has promised I'm going to revive you. I'm going to revive you. You are going to walk with my glory. You are going to walk with my power. You are going to walk with my anointing. Come on now. Praise be to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord has promised blessing to the humble. Are you humble before the Lord? The Lord says, likewise ye younger, submitting yourself unto the elder. Ye all of you be subject one to another. And be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud and giveth grace to the humble. God resisted the proud. Pride is a very old sin. It started with the devil in heaven when he was cut down from heaven and came down to earth. If you are humble before the Lord, if you are walking in humility, the Lord is going to pour his giftings upon you. If you can declare Agarations chapter 2 verse 20 and say that it is not I, it is not I but Christ Jesus that lives in me. Hallelujah. If you proclaim that word as a sign of humility before the Lord, are you humble? Are you submitted? This is the blessing. The Lord has promised blessings upon your life. He gives grace to the humble. Sometimes some of us you are lacking grace in our lives because you are full of pride, because you are not humble, because you are not submissive. But there is a promise for you. This is a blessing with a condition that if you are humble, ye younger, submit yourself to the elder, submit yourself to the to the leadership God has given you in the church. Hallelujah. Buona Yesu Asifasana. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord has promised uh, to the righteous. He has promised to the righteous in Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him. Hallelujah. Are you righteous there today? I want to tell you as the word of God is telling me to tell you it shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. It doesn't matter what you're facing right now. I want to tell you and I believe it as I'm speaking it prophetically to you. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with you and you shall eat the fruit of the Lord. You shall eat the goodness of the ladder. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 53 verse, verse, verse 5. The Lord has promised to heal us of our diseases. He has promised to heal us. He was afflicted. He was beaten. He was beaten. He was beaten that none stripes on the cross because of my healing. You can receive healing for any disease. And if you are sick in your body, if you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, receive your healing. Receive your healing. Receive your healing from anxiety. Receive your healing from HIV and AIDS. Receive your healing from cancer. 
cancer. Receive your healing. Receive your miracle now. Receive your healing from cancer. Cervical cancer. Receive your healing. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus from breast cancer. Receive your healing from back pains. Receive your healing now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. These are the promises of the Father. We can lean upon the promises of God. We can rule and reign with Jesus. That's another promise in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 12. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If you are suffering in your salvation, people are against your salvation in your family. They are just mocking you and mocking your salvation, mocking your prayers, mocking your prayer life. I want to tell you the Lord has promised you are going to reign with him. You are going to rule with Jesus. You are going to rule with him. Do not give up on your prayer life. Do not give up. I know I'm speaking to somebody right now. Do not give up on your faith. Even if you're in a nation where you're, where you're facing persecution because of your faith, do not give up, my brother. Do not give up, my sister. The Lord says, I'm going to uphold you. I'm going to be with you. And I pray even right now as you're watching, may you receive new comfort from Jehovah, God of Israel. May you receive new graces. May you receive new favor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord has promised that if we suffer, we shall also ring with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. He has promised. He has promised. He has promised to you, my brother. He has promised to you, my sister. He has promised to you. He has great promises for us in the Bible, in the word of the Lord. He has promised to bless us. He has promised to visit us in a special way. Hallelujah. And he is changing us to be like him. He has promised us. Can you lean upon the promises of God? I pray that the Lord will help you to lean upon his promises in your life. Praise be to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That is the key of the promises of God. That is a very important key. You can depend on him. You can depend on him. You can depend on the Lord Jesus Christ for, for his protection. Hallelujah. You can depend on him. He, he is a rewinder of those who diligently seek him. According to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Do not be slack in your seeking the Lord. Do not be slack in your prayer life. Do not be slack in reading the word of God. Do not be slack in attending meetings in the church. Even right now the churches that are open. You should not be slack in attending church meetings. You should not be slack in gathering. The Bible says we should keep the habit of gathering together. Don't be lazy. Many Christians are lazy. Many Christians are sluggish. Many Christians are so sluggish and lazy. They are so lazy. They don't want to follow the Lord. But the Lord is telling you there are rewards of those people who seek God diligently. There are rewards of those people who serve the Lord. Maybe you have been serving the Lord for many years and you're wondering, is there a blessing for me? Is there any reward for me? In the book of Malachi chapter 3, and verses 18, this is what the Bible says. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serves God and him that serves him not. I want to encourage the ministers of the gospel. I want to encourage you, a youth worker. I want to encourage you, a deacon, a deaconess. I want to encourage you as a pastor, as a teacher of the world, as an evangelist, as an apostle, as a minister, as a prophet in the work of God. I want to encourage you as a nurse, as a cleaner. I want to, to, to encourage you as an administrator, as an office worker. I want to encourage you as a, as a, as a, as a instrumentalist in the church, as a place and worship leader. I want to encourage you. The Lord has promised those who are serving him, not those who are serving. There comes a time God is going to put a line between those who are serving him and those who are not serving him. Be encouraged to be able to serve the Lord. Be encouraged. Be encouraged, my brother. Be encouraged, my sister. As you're serving him, he is going to reward you. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently serve him. Hallelujah. Are you serving with your whole heart? Are you serving him or you are like a Messiah? The Bible says a Messiah served the Lord. A Messiah served the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. Are you serving with a perfect heart? Are you serving with an open heart? Are you serving where the Lord has placed you? Because it is God who places us in the ministry, in the work of the Lord, in his great vine. He is the one who places us. Some of you, he will call you to go to mission work in other nations. 
Are you serving the Lord faithfully? Are you serving the Lord in worship? Are you serving the Lord in your family? Are you taking care of your family as a father? As a father, as a provider of the family, of your all you have neglected the duties of the family, and you're saying the angels can take care of your wife and take care of your children. Your wife was not married to angels, and your children was not born to angels. You have to take responsibility of your family. Are you a submissive wife to your to your husband? Are you an obedient child to your to your parents? Uh, hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. These are keys that cause us to receive the blessings of the Father. These are keys that help us to receive the blessings from our God. Hallelujah. Are you in your place? Are you in your position where God has placed you? Are you doing the right thing? Are you doing the right thing? Are you walking holy? Are you walking pure? You can claim the rewards of the people who are walking with Jesus. The Bible says, and whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these rich ones a cup of cold water, only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no no wise receive, uh, lose his reward. Have you been serving the Lord even with your finances in support of the work of God? I want to tell you today, the Lord is coming upon your life. The Lord is coming to reward you. The Lord has come to visit you in an unusual way. The Lord is going to release the miracles upon your life. Come on now. Praise be to the name of Jesus. The Lord has promised to reward those who are seeking him diligently. The Lord has promised to reward. The Lord has promised to reward you. Hallelujah. Those are rewards of the people that are seeking the Lord, that are giving themselves to the work of the ministry. It is not in vain to serve the Lord. The Bible says, be not to be weary. Be not weary of doing good things unto people, unto people, unto the work of God, unto the kingdom. Do not be weary, especially those of the household of faith that sells the Bible, that sells us the Bible. Do not be weary. Do not be, uh, do not be weary of doing good good of doing good especially to the people of the household of faith hallelujah to the name of the lord jesus christ the lord has promised to give us safety psalms 91 verse 10 there shall no evil befall thee Neither shall any prayer come near nigh thy dwelling. You can claim that word and declare in the name of Jesus, this is my house. There shall no evil that will befall me. There shall no evil that will befall me. My sister, learn to lean upon the promises of God. Learn to declare the word of God even against the devil. Learn to declare the word of God even against the enemy. Learn to call upon the name of the Lord and the Lord is going to help you. He is your helper in the time of need. Praise be to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They shall not pray that it shall come near your dwelling. It doesn't matter what is happening in the world today. It doesn't matter what kind of evil is coming. It doesn't matter which kind of variant or virus is coming upon the world. The Lord says to you now, there shall not be prayer. There shall not, there shall, there, there, there. Neither shall any prayer come near thy dwelling. You can declare, I declare in the name of Jesus, I put a line. There shall no prayer come near my dwelling, near my house, near my children, where they are in school. There's no prayer that will touch them in the name of Jesus. You can declare that by faith, my brother, my sister. Come on now. The Lord has promised salvation. He has promised salvation for all your family members. He has promised salvation for us. He has promised salvation of nations. The Bible says that the Lord is the governor of all nations. He has promised I'm going to deliver even as I'm speaking the word right now and, and where this broadcast is going and the gospel of Jesus has never reached there. I want to prophesy in the name of Jesus that the gospel of Jesus will come to that nation. The word of God will come to that land. I'm declaring it by faith. That territory where the gospel has never reached. As I'm declaring this word. And you're hearing it from where you are. I declare the doors to open up. For the gospel of Jesus to come there. In the mighty name of Jesus. And if you're there. You don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have you don't have the life of the Lord Jesus Christ upon your life. I want to declare to you now. As you receive Jesus in your heart. As Lord and Savior. You are going to be saved. Can you repeat this prayer after me? 
and say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I repent all my sins. I ask you to come into my heart. I refuse the devil and all his works. I refuse Satan. I break demonic covenants I've made with the Satan. I reject all of them in the name of Jesus, and I come out of them. I receive you, Jesus, as Lord and Savior in my heart. If you have prayed that prayer, you are a Christian now. Receive the power of God upon your life. Receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Receive the anointing of the Most High God upon your life. Receive the promises of Jehovah. Receive the anointing of God upon your life to help you to walk in purity and holiness. And may God lead you to a church where you can where you can worship with the Bible-believing people. May the Lord guide you now, even unto death. He is going to guide you. That is the promise of the Bible. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord keep your family. May the Lord keep your children. May the Lord preserve you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you.